Ah, I guess we're recording. Yes, we are. Anyway, okay, sun's over there, so I guess I'll change hands. That would be the clever thing to do. A little bit windy, sorry about that, <clears throat> and such. So anyway, I was, uh, I just watched an old version, 1954 version of uh, Big Brother, you know, George Orwell. And, uh, yeah, I don't think I've, well, I haven't seen it for years. And, uh, a movie version of it anyway, a, a, a direct version. Um, I mean, relevant to the book, let's say, or close to it, or even. I mean, you could argue that a lot of other stories were kind of related to it. Um, Catch-22. Uh, but anyway, um, so, uh, what was I going to say? So anyway, yeah, but it, it, it did remind me, you know, because I... I my memory of it was more towards the book, and uh, so just watching it was like one of those things where you watch a, you know, like, like you know, a book you read 50 years ago, <laughs> you know, whatever, 40, um, you know, 13, I think I was. Anyway, and you know, you have this impression, you have these visions that you try to, you know, incorporate, and uh, different things just kind of turn you off, and other things you get, and. Uh, you know, and, and so there was just little parts of it. I do remember, um, you know, I had little problems with the idea of Big Brother as, a, as the adversary um, in some respects, just because some parts of our life are rotten. I mean, parts of the real world are crap, <laughs> you know, and um, you wouldn't pay too high a price for solutions. But it's like neither one of them is an answer. It's like neither choice. The world before Big Brother, the world after Big Brother, I wouldn't pay a dime to live in either one. And that's sort of the dilemma of it. The, the depressing nature of it all is, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, you know, there's, there's so little to root for here. It's like all the teams are flawed. Um, and, uh, yeah, it just kind of leaves you despondent and hopeless. And, yeah, sort of. Kind of. Um, doom. Um, you know, these, these visions... Well, so, so, so the thing I'm thinking now about... See, the thing that, that would bother me then was, you know, the little church bullshit. You know, the little church jingo, lingo bullshit that was in there. I remember that bothered me. And I also found it appealing to um, fix some of our language. You know, some of double speak I liked, or the new speak, um, because I liked the idea of language being fixed, because it did seem very broken. So, I mean, I've even made videos doing the un thing rather than the good to bad, you know, changing it from bad to ungood, <laughs> or changing it from, from good to not as bad. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of my double speak. So I find some of that appealing, um, because yeah, we this chaos, this sloppiness with which the human is interacting with reality, so pitiful. And so anyway, we look at the world we have now. We have the freedom. I can speak pretty bold speaks without much threat. Uh, but uh, you're speaking to the wind, which is a part of the problem. Uh, what what use freedom? Um, in a world um, so um, blighted by too much of it. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't, you know, freedom to what? More noise to make noise? That's all it seems like there is, is the freedom to make noise, the freedom to claim, the freedom to state. Uh, and so much of that freedom has to do with, oh, he has a lovely voice. <laughs> you know, with the voice for radio thing. Yeah, so if you have the right voice, authoritative in its timber and timber and all that kind of crap. Um, like the, you know, you, you, you have a spiel. Like the Alex Joneses of the world. The Rush Limbaugh's. It doesn't really matter that you're saying anything. As long as you got some, you got a voice and you have um, the pretense of authority. And then all you have to do is not make gigantic errors. You know, I mean, it can be pretty preposterously large errors, you know, but just avoid saying something too stupid seems to be the standard. Um, 
and that's kind of pitiful and depressing. Uh, you know, it's little cliches to, uh, you know, get evade subjects. I actually saw a little bit of that concordance guy really pissed me off in the, in the, uh, whatever you call that, magic sandwich show. Is they're on the subject of the, you know, environmental crisis kind of thing. And, uh, you know, he was bad mouthing, uh, you know, shit talking on Al Gore. And, you know, Al Gore's a politician and a douchebag and a lot of things. But, uh, truth is, he got people to pay attention to it. And, uh, it was certainly within boundaries and reason. And, yeah, he tied it to, uh, yeah, he made it sound like there was some other agenda, you know. And, uh, it's just such a cheap shot. I mean, the fact that, like, like it's some sort of social liberal agenda, <laughs> you know, to have, uh, uh, you know, uh, $10 gasoline and, uh, you know, tiny battery-operated cars and all this other shit. Like, somehow liberals just love driving around and, you know, wind up Volkswagens or something. Uh, no, no, what they love is being practical and sensible. It's not exactly they're doing it because they like the idea of it. Like, they wouldn't love if they could have free limousines, that <laughs> they'd be voting against free limousines. It's just so stupid. But the point is, it's not free. And uh, it's not Al Gore's fault that the facts point to uh, the fact that you're going to have to do something about it. And what you're going to have to do about it isn't going to be fucking convenient. That was the whole fucking point of calling it Inconvenient Truth. And he couldn't remember that name, of course, which sort of does a giveaway also. But what a good douchebag. I mean, wasted the whole... The whole conversation of the show uh, became a about Al Gore. <laughs> That's not the fucking subject, asshole. So anyway, it was just kind of... I never liked the guy anyway, but he just sounded like such a douchebag. Fucking... He, he sucks. There's it's nothing else to say. He's some kind of wishy-washy atheist. He's a wishy-washy everything. Uh, he commits to nothing but his own fucking glorification, I think. So anyway, enough of that. Jeez, he's even distracting my video, the fucking cunt. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so anyway. But it did give me a little bit of... A little anger running through my blood there. Because I was feeling kind of despondent. Because that's what the whole... When you start thinking about the past and the future... Man, it's just dystopia everywhere. Uh, where are we going? What can you do with this chaos? What can you do with a, a humankind that has the liberty to think but no fucking uh, discipline to do it? Now, that, that discipline that brings up another stupid video by Matt. You know, thou art that. He defined philosophy as disciplined imagination or something. It was just such a pile of crap. I mean, the objective is the truth. If you're not seeking the truth, <laughs> you know, you're not a philosopher, you're something else. You're in psychology games, uh, there is a truth to be revealed. And that's what a philosopher should be uh, attempting to accomplish. Not that complicated. Really, isn't. Uh, <clears throat> But anyway, that whole word discipline shows up. Disciplined by what? Uh, you know, the bounds of preposterous? <laughs> the, the, the boundaries of what? Ludicrous? So ludicrous that you'll drop dead laughing? Where, where's the discipline here? What discipline is the human race being guided by or confined by? Uh, the discipline of preposterous contradiction and chaos. Uh, you know, chaos. This should be a word that scares people. <laughs> you know, I mean, as much as there's, you don't want some kind of obligation to speak, to speak, uh, because it's wrong. The, the fact of a challenge. You want the fair fight. You want the battlefield of ideas to be legitimate. 
uh, you know, not to, uh, this idea that the, the, the only way you have a real battlefield is if you keep contriving uh, contestants. You never declare anything the winner. Uh, it's like some sort of yellow bus philosophy. You know, just, just keep telling the retards they're doing okay. No matter what they paint, no matter what they fart, it's brilliant. They're brilliant. They cannot fail, even though they're, they're fail. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you know. So, anyway. Yeah, so, just was, uh, I don't know what it was. It was just so 1984-ish. I just had like a, a 1984 kind of moment inside my own psychology as I attempted to see some some purpose or hope of purpose and uh, you know there's no again what what what's the alternative to Big Brother in the story of Big Brother is the the shittopia that we have now I mean there is no Big Brother but there might as well be in the sense that the chaos is, is owning us the fact that uh, all opinions are legitimate, all cultural crap is somehow valid, and it's not. <laughs> it's, it's just stupid to say it is. What the fuck is that thing? Lawn chair? It must have been the hurricane. Oh, it's one of deer things. Well, isn't that evil? A little hunting station. Let's see if I know somebody who has AIDS and see if they can take a shit on it or something. Anyway, I didn't say that. It's not my, no, 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 no. Not my suggestion at all. So anyway, I will hit golf balls and get touch. And then I'll get tired and more depressed. And such. Whoa, I think I'm back. Um, pretty much. For the most part. <laughs> anyway. Uh, let's see, what was I? Yes. Yeah, somewhere in between. You know, that's the problem. You've got to find the, the right balance. Balance, balance. Um, you know, between the silly talk, like the, you know, the, the way too emotional, way too artsy-fartsy, um, way too, um, you know, the, too distant from the understanding the mechanical nature of our psychology and uh, the philosophy that gets too clinical to you know so 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 much of an acknowledgement of of the uh, the manipulability of our um, perception um, the fact that you can uh, control psychology Manufacture psychology, maybe is a better word. Uh, and it's not even so much that knowledge of that; it's just the manipulation of it. Uh, I mean, the evil is, um, you know, that there's always these these entities fighting for the dystopia. This is not my path. Um, you know, whether it's um, you know, somebody's taking advantage. In Big Brother, you, you don't get to see who it is, but it somewhere lingers in there. The, the idea that there is uh, something that's, um, you know, profiting from the, the po poverty, po profiting from the, the brokenness of the system. Um, because Again, it's sort of like the Matrix, right? I mean, to make a movie, sometimes they have to create a very fake world, you know, a false a lie of some kind, to uh, get people to fear something. I can't find my path. What will I do? <laughs> I don't know. I guess I'm stuck here in the woods forever and ever. This must be it. 
Yeah, it's almost it's almost got the wear of a path. You can almost see it. Yeah, interesting. I almost made it new. Anyway, um it's really not much of a path either. Sorry, I'm being kind of lazy in how I'm thinking about this. There's not just like I mean I'm not gonna advocate for some oh yeah, it's always the asshole in the middle is right. I mean, because that's bullshit. Um but, because uh, I guess I would say the clinical is correct. The problem with the clinical is who's controlling it. Because uh, I think if there was, like, a real true big brother, you know, just the big brother is just the, the mechanism of big brother, let's say, that that would uh, end up making humans rather efficient. And maybe they would have a better life if it was just a the idea of an imposed discipline, you know, the idea of a imposed parameters, you know, where war wasn't war, um, you know, where everything was just manufactured to give people the illusion of um, something to live for and to fight for, um, you know, and without all the, the obvious negative components of controlling thoughts and all that kind of stuff, I don't think you need to do that be able to have a machinery that would uh, be like father's knows best. You know, Big Brother, if it was benign in its intent, clear and honest, open source, like an open source Big Brother, where it could be um, enhanced or modified if you could demonstrate to, do, to Big Brother that you had a valid modification, you know, one that would increase human comfort or satisfaction or even the peaks of enjoyment. Um, but yeah, it seems, you know, that we know the context of our creation. We know what we are psychologically. And, uh, you know, it's hard to manufacture that into something. <laughs> you know, it's, it really is. Because if you leave it loose, if you let it run free, uh, ignorance and stupidity will rule the world. It's like cable TV reverted back to its ignorant origins. It went all the way back to, you know, just being uh, the vast wasteland once again. Because the only way to make money in the medium is uh, through this silly mechanism of uh, you know, marketing, lying, big brother. <laughs> you know, double speak, triple speak, bullshit speak, nonsense speak, moron speak. And uh, so, if moron speak is going to sell product, then moron speak is going to make the product, which is the medium. Uh, don't complain that your, your art turns to crap, uh, you know, when you finance it. Uh, with a crappy mechanism. Um, so where else to go with this? Yeah, so there's no moral to the story, I guess. I'm just saying that that's the the tragedy of most of these stories, these negative visions of the future, is that uh, it's hard to compose the brilliant version. Um, you can just see the bits that need to be torn out, the bits that were stupid. It's like Russian communism. The, the, the nasty bits were so obvious. You know, the prohibition against, you know, sex and rock and roll and all that crap. That was just so silly and stupid. It was so um, corrosive uh, to, uh, you know, anything, uh, you know, just, there was no point in it. It, was, it had no, no. It was not a productive enhancement to the collective. <laughs> you know, it was stupid. Uh, what else? Yeah, no, I didn't make much out of this. My brain is whirling. It's got some stuff going on in there. So maybe I'll come up with a better, uh, whatever expression of the expression. A better. Um, uh, consolidation of the 
paradoxical thoughts that have that are roaming my mind. Yeah, that's right. I'll just promise to do better next time. Well, wasp or something like that. And I didn't sting at all. So anyway, till the next time. And such. I'm just quite down. Quite dismal. The weather is just beautiful. <laughs> it's just it's always like that. It's always something broken at the wrong time. When you feel good, you're uninspired. When you're inspired, you feel like shit. It's just, I know it's not a rule. It's not written in stone anywhere. It just seems that way. It just seems that you can never do, you can just never get all the wheels rolling in the same direction at the same time. And I guess that's sort of the point of the video is that all this chaos built into our world just makes it so difficult to do anything valuable or constructive. Oh, man. It really is a lovely day. Oh. Oh.